The first time I heard about Night in the Woods was a few years ago from a friend. He told me that no book, no song, no movie, no piece of media had ever made him miss his hometown. Except for this game. This man hated his hometown. So I can only assume he didn't get nostalgic about it because his hometown was populated by furries. In Night in the Woods, you enter the fuzzy little head of May Borowski, a deeply troubled 20-year-old woman-slash-cat person who on a dark, late autumn night decides to return to her hometown of Possum Springs, a small town heavily burdened by small town problems. You see, back in the day, Possum Springs was a town with a strong industry and a healthy economy, but ever since the big coal mine was shut down a few years ago, the town has stagnated. Local mom and pop shops have had to close their doors. Old buildings and monuments are deteriorating because no one can afford to maintain them or do business there anymore. And the town's younger generation are at a crossroads. Leave the town to grow or stay and stagnate with it. It may not come as a shock then that May returns quite demotivated and low on confidence. She just dropped out of college, you see, a fact that she refuses to share with her parents who she now needs to share a roof with again. They just wouldn't get it, man. First order of business is to get the band back together. Literally. B, Angus and Greg with varying levels of affection welcome their old friend back into town with a spontaneous band practice followed by a pizza hang at the local diner. And just as they're heading home for the night, they discover that someone must have minced words and thought that you arm the bill instead of footing it. <laughs> this severed arm is only one of several mysteries our small town mystery gang need to mystery solve as they stumble across all sorts of jeepers creepers uh-oh, no no shenanigans. And this is what drives a lot of the game's plot forward, as May decides it's her duty as the resident main character to figure out who's really behind the metaphorical macabre mask that's haunting her hometown. How'd you go about doing this? You gotta go detective on this town's ass. Talk to the locals. Do a triple jump. Play Guitar Hero. Break some light bulbs. Stargaze. This step only applies to the Scorpios out there. Pizza! Talk to mom! This game is chill. The closest thing you'll find to failure in this game is to only eat four pizza slices when you could have eaten seven. You know what I mean? It's not so much about overcoming any challenges as it is about just taking in the town and the people that inhabit it. Do things at your own pace. Maybe get a little blanket. Hog cup of cocoa? Put some marshmallows in that shit? Toss some sprinkles on there. Ooh, whipped cream? Mmm, yeah, and that- No, 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 that's too much. Please stop. It's a big time Twin Peaks, Gravity Falls type autumn experience. The game is positively bursting with warm hues of orange, gray, rainy blues, and the promise of approaching wintry gusts of wind. The soundtrack serenades you with soft acoustic midi guitars and timid piano notes. It has that bitter sweetness of a season about to change. The familial warmth of summer is fading and the cold winter is ahead. It's like... Do you... Do you like video games where things go KABLAMO! <laughs> Satan Hill Demon Annihilated Blow! All the time? You do? Uh-uh. Then you should look elsewhere. Do you like video games where you talk to the animals a bunch? This is it. This is the one. Do not try to pet them though, that is very degrading and frankly just a little bit racist. Seeing how so much of the game is dialogue, it's a damn good thing it's as well written as it is. It teeters on the line between gloomy and funny in a remarkable way that makes it feel surprisingly down to earth. <laughs> Why yes officer, I did just say that about the game that has a stealth minigame where you steal pretzels so you can feed them to your adoptive rat babies that live in a robot. Officer, please don't take away my driver's license, please, I need- All right, I'ma jump up on the Acropolis and spit some life facts at you. You see, 
The thing about life is that it contains multitudes. Nothing is funny when it tries to be funny all the time, and media that tries to be nothing but serious often comes off as pretentious or dreary. Open up your goddamn coloring books, kids. Let's talk about nuance. What is gray? The combination of black and white, right? Yes, technically. But gray is also just one single color, a watered out midpoint of black and white. It's black and white without any of the extremities. It's the absence of nuance. Would you rather have an outfit that's all grays or one that's black and white? You know what's all gray? Timmy Turner and everybody else in that episode of Fairly Odd Parents where your wishes everyone looked the same. You know what's black and white? Adidas sweatpants. Yes! Ooh, now that's a timeless combo. That's what you want. Multitudes. Despair feels overwhelming in the absence of hope. A tragedy with no room for reprieve can feel claustrophobic. Much like a nice pair of Adidas sweatpants, variety is what lets you, the audience, breathe. A single note on the piano played endlessly will make you hate pianos, but a brilliant composition will make you want to snort shredded sheet music for breakfast like... <laughs> This is all to say, I really like the fox, the bear, the crocodile, and the cat. In spite of their appearances, the characters in Night in the Woods are far from two-dimensional. The quartet of animal friends that consists of our four main characters, May, Greg, Bee, and Angus, is great. Greg is an energetic troublemaker who will enthusiastically drag you to the outskirts of town to smash light bulbs with a baseball bat, and I'm pretty sure he's the spirit animal and patron saint of the church of be gay do crimes. He is an absolute ray of sunshine, and I love him. Just look at that smile, man. Angus is Greg's more reserved, tech-savvy boyfriend. Much to his own dismay, he often ends up playing the straight man to Greg and May's shenanigans, but even though he can come off as a bit stoic, this friend-shaped bear has a heart of gold. B is a sarcasm-toting goth girl, with a cold exterior and a warm cigarette to keep her company at all times. She also happens to be the only one in the friend group who owns a car, which is... Pretty incredible, considering how poor public transport typically is in small towns. Take it from the guy who grew up in a town that has two bus departures every day. One to school, and one from school. No, I'm not kidding. May is our main gal, the lens through which we view the town of Possum Springs. She's got attitude, she's got sass, and she's got many symptoms of depression. May makes mistakes. She says the wrong thing. She gets too angry. She drinks too much. She gets moody. But she's also endlessly curious and imaginative. She loves stargazing, and she genuinely cares about her hometown and its inhabitants. Sure, sometimes you want to reach through the screen and tell her to stop being an ass, but it's just because you care. You don't want her to indulge any of her self-destructive tendencies, because in the end, you just want her to figure herself out and be happy. I just, want, I just want that cat to smile. I just want to see the cat do a, do a smile. Over the course of the game, you really get to see what it is that makes the main cast tick. You get to see their struggles, their good days as well as their bad. You get to see why they are the way they are, their insecurities, their dreams. As labelable, that doesn't sound like a word, as they may seem at first, Greg, Angus, B, and May are written with real depth and nuance. The real stinger of it all is that the game knows when to be funny, but I'll be damned if it doesn't also know when to fiddle with your heartstrings as well. Shit's written well, man. Like, fucking Shakespeare can go sit on a picket fence. Night in the Woods is where it's at. Othello, more like, aw, oh, hell no. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet, more like, no, Romeo and Juliet, you know what I mean, comrade? Can you tell that I minored in English? As Socrates once said, four anthropomorphic animals doth not a town make, and it's certainly not just our core four that breathe life into Possum Springs. You got my girl Selmers, the street poet, who's always got some rhymes up her sleeve, ready to verbally pop a cap and parapazazz any day of the week. 
We got Mr. Chadzikov, who I always imagine to sound a bit like this for some reason. He's May's old teacher, and he'll just occasionally invite you up on the roof of his house so you can look at stars together. Nice. We got those weird teens hanging out underground, doing what I can only really describe as teen stuff. We got May's parents, who you meet at the start and end of each in-game day, and they're just really solid. I, I really like them. They're just supportive, and, you know, they're there, and, uh, yeah, no, they're just great. And we got GERM, Germ WARFARE! He is the fifth wheel in the gang, he has a pet possum, he rides a bike instead of a car to pollute less, and... I don't know, I just think he's neat. I just think he's neat. That's my Marge Simpson impression, thank you everyone. It's really good, isn't it? Even the town itself is a character. Possum Springs is a town that comes complete with its own history, its struggles, and little human nuances. Possum Springs previously having been a prosperous mining hotspot that has fallen on hard times is felt in each of its inhabitants in different ways and serves as a backdrop for much social tension and many personal struggles. The younger generation have been dealt a rough hand and in many ways they feel powerless. Unemployment rates are high, people have already been moving for decades and prospects are low. Many feel pushed to leave the town in order to forge a brighter future for themselves, but those who can't afford to leave feel trapped. Trapped in a town that had already failed them before they were born. The older generation look towards a past that no longer exists, a past that they strive to recapture. The town is littered with monuments and symbols of its former glory, but how can you walk forward when you're constantly looking back? How can you keep a dying town alive? And is it even possible for future generations to repair what has been broken? There's a real sense of desperation that colors all of its inhabitants and their lives. The struggle between those who gaze at an idealized past with rose-tinted glasses and those who rebel to forge a new path is tangible. I love that the band our main characters are in mostly metal and punk rock type genres. It really brings home the point of youthful rebellion. Hell, one of their most prominent songs is titled Die Anywhere Else. What more do you need to say? In the end, it's all the little moments you share with the varied and vibrant cast of characters that really makes Night in the Woods shine. You really grow to love all these weirdos, and by the time the credits roll, it's hard to say goodbye. When the game was over, I really wanted to start another playthrough just so I could spend some more time with the gang in Possum Springs and explore the B storyline. I picked Greg on my first playthrough because how could I not? I mean, come on, just fucking look at that fucking smile, oh my god! Developer Infinite Fall clearly poured a lot of love into these characters and the town that they live in, and you can both see and feel it. The game is a charmer from start to finish, and among all the dark mysteries of Possum Springs, you're met with a humanity that perhaps you can only find among old acquaintances in a small town like this. Like a hometown you outgrew only to revisit it and find something to appreciate when giving it a second look. I really like Night in the Woods. It's a slice of life in the best meaning of the phrase, and it's a great game about little moments. Fuck you, toilet paper. Fuck you.